Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I want to talk about fiddle leaf figs. I want to talk about some care instructions and some tips on how to have success. So I have one right next to me. In fact, I posted a picture of this one. Um, this one is new to me fairly recently. Um, when I brought it home, I took a picture, posted it on Instagram and Facebook, and it got quite a reaction. There were a lot of you guys who wanted me to make a video on care instructions. Um, and I thought that that was a super great idea. But my experience is somewhat limited just because I have never taken care of one in my home. Um, I've taken care of lots of them at, down at the garden center. You know, you get them in and they'll last a few days up to maybe a few months before somebody buys them and takes them home. And I don't really think that's a sufficient amount of time to really understand any type of plant. I think to really understand a plant, you need to at least have them for a full year. You know, see them through all of the different seasons, um, their growing season, their dormant season, and that way you really know like the full cycle, I guess, of each plant. So what I've done is I went to a couple of my gardening friends that both care for fiddle leaf figs in their home and have really good success with it, and I asked them to write their top tips for care. So I kind of compiled all of those tips together, plus I added in kind of my limited knowledge on the subject, and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So first of all, let me say that the fiddle leaf fig are a tropical plant. They thrive in a zone nine to 11. So if you live in a colder growing zone, like I live in a zone five, which means we can have winters down into the negatives. This last winter we got down to negative 17. So if you live anywhere below a zone nine, you need to make sure to have your, your fig in a container, especially if it's a plant you're gonna wanna be moving inside and outside. I wanna break this video up into two sections. The first section I wanna talk about if you're gonna keep your fig inside as a houseplant all the time, what kind of care it needs. And the second section, if you are planning on moving your fig outside for the summer, I wanna talk about how the care will change a little bit. So let's talk about keeping it as a house plant first. Um, as far as light goes, you wanna give it as much bright indirect light as possible. It does not need to sit in direct sun. In fact, if it's summertime, even if it's inside, you want to keep it out of the really bright intense sun because it can damage the foliage. If it's winter time, the sun isn't as intense, so you can move it into that light and it will probably flourish and like that but you need to keep in mind that you need to keep it away from the window just a little bit because you know it can feel pretty cold or drafty, especially if you, if you have older windows. I have a few older windows in my home um, that I wouldn't wanna put plants right up next to. Uh, and then also in the summertime, same goes, you don't wanna have it right up next to a window where it can get really hot because that can burn their leaves. And watering is really easy on these. There's actually a couple of schools of thought. In fact, my friends both have different kind of methods for doing this. One of my friends likes to water more frequently, so once a week but with less water. So she's got about a five foot fig, which is, mine's not quite five feet, but it's getting there. She gives hers about two cups of water once a week and she just pours it evenly around the soil on the top of the pot. She doesn't dump it all in one spot um, so that it's just one side of the root ball that's getting water. She just kind of um, evenly disperses it. And my other friend prefers to water less often, but with more water. So she'll go in with about a gallon of water every other week and she'll water it and let all the water drain. She'll make sure that the pot is not sitting in any water. And really either way you decide to do it, depending on what works for your schedule will work. Most houseplants will thrive that way. You can do uh, less water more often or more water less often, if that makes sense. Um, usually on this type of plant, I keep mine uh, personally in my own home and down at the garden center on more of a frequent schedule just because I have so many things, so many plants going on that I like to just keep my eyes on everything. So I'd probably do the less water more often. They do not like to be soggy or wet, so you want to make sure that you put your fig in a pot that has really good drainage. Um, that's really important with these type of plants. Figs do not need to be fertilized that often. During their growing season, so usually spring through fall, you want to fertilize about once a month. And I use, in fact I have it, I'll use something like this. This is a Spoma indoor houseplant food. Um, so once a month during the growing season, and then I'll back off to like once every two to three months during its dormant period. So during like fall through, um, like late fall through early spring, I will back off on fertilizer because I just don't need that much. As far as some other maintenance things, you wanna make sure that you keep the leaves dusted. These are huge leaves and they are huge. They can be huge dust collectors. I live in a super dusty farming community. So when they're out working the fields and like the machines are, the machines, the tractors are going, I mean, they're kicking up dust everywhere and I could probably dust twice a day in my house. 
and it, I still probably wouldn't keep on top of it. And you need to remember your plants because they need to be kept clear so they can absorb light, so they can photosynthesize properly. So just keep that in mind that maybe like an every two week or once a month dusting of these leaves is a good idea. To do that, you don't wanna just go in and start wiping off the leaves. You wanna cradle the leaf with one of your hands and then wipe off the top with the other because you can pop these leaves off with just a little bit of pressure, so you wanna be careful with them. And just use a damp microfiber cloth or just even a dry microfiber cloth to just clean those up a little bit. Um, just groom off any foliage that looks tattered or anything that looks burned or uh, just anything that doesn't look good. And that goes for any other plant. You know, you don't want the plant to send energy into keeping gross looking foliage alive. You want it to send energy rather into new growth, um, keeping the plant healthy. When it comes to shaping or pruning your fig, you can either buy them already in tree form like I did, or you can buy them in more of a shrub form, which is also beautiful. But if you like the look of a more bare trunk, it is okay to remove lower leaves as newer ones start to emerge. You can also prune it to encourage more horizontal branching. So if you've got some upward growing uh, branches, what you'd wanna do is come right up above where one of the leaves comes out. So where a leaf attaches to the branch, that's called a node. So you wanna go slightly above that leaf and make a cut and that will encourage more outward branching rather than upward branching so that you can get a nice full tree. My friend Katie started off with a single stem fig and she now has a five foot fig tree. So with the right um, type of growing conditions, the right pruning, you can get it there. The best time to repot figs is early spring. That's right before they're gonna start their growth phase. Um, it's best to use a just a regular potting mix, just a high quality one. So I have the organic potting mix from Espoma. That works really, really well. Um, just make sure to use a high quality regular potting mix. And when you choose your pot, make sure to choose one that's only a couple inches bigger than the root ball. So you want the root ball like mine here, the root ball came out to about here, and it's got about two and a half, maybe three inches to grow. Um, out to the sides of the pot. They do tend to like to be a little bit cramped. They like to be a little bit pot bound like most house plants do. If you put it in too big of a pot and just hope that it'll grow in and become this huge tree, it actually can do more harm than good. They, it tends to shock them and it, I know it doesn't make sense because you can plant these outside natively if you're in the right growing zone and they do fine and that's a huge you know, never ending reservoir. But when it comes to house plants, they react a little bit different. So just make sure to pick a pot that's the appropriate size and make sure to pick one out that has really good drainage. So that's about it as far as inside care goes. Now, if you are planning on moving your fig out for the summer season, which is really a good idea, they do flourish if you can move them outside, there are a couple of differences. So you wanna make sure that you are past the danger of frost. You don't wanna put these things out when it's too cold because it will hurt their leaves. It might even kill the plant if it's too cold. So wait until danger of frost passes and then you wanna slowly acclimate your plant. So you don't just stick it right outside um, and just hope that it does okay. You wanna just kind of gradually move it out if you can. If you have a, a protected patio or something like that, if you can move it out during the day and then back in at night for a few days so it can kind of slowly get used to outside temperatures and conditions, that is ideal. You wanna make sure to put it in a spot that's protected from wind and protected from afternoon sun. It does not like the beating hot, intense afternoon sun that will scorch the leaves. It really prefers a spot with bright shade. Um, it can take a little bit of filtered morning sun and that is okay. Um, as far as watering goes, it will change because if there's a breeze outside, it dries the soil out a lot faster. Uh, if it's getting a little bit more light or, you know, just environmental factors like that can um, change the amount that you have to water. You'll have to increase the amount of times you water probably to every three to four days. In my area, even if I put this in bright shade, it gets um, upwards of 110 here in the summer. So I'll probably be checking on mine every other day, maybe not watering it that often, um, but possibly when it gets that hot. So just keep in mind that um, that will change. You will have to keep more of an eye on it when it's outside. Um, but they do like it. They'd love to be outside. All of my houseplants, when I move them outside for the summer, it's just like they get a new lease on life and they flourish and they grow and look beautiful. So that's it, you guys. That is Care for Fiddly Figs. I wanna give a huge shout out to Katie and Andrea, my two friends who helped me out with some tips for taking care of them. Uh, Katie is my best friend, amazing gardener. She's got amazing style. And Andrea is a wealth of information. She is a master gardener and she's lived in several different areas. So Portland, Oregon, Pennsylvania, now Idaho. And when you live in that many different gardening climates and regions, you really do learn a lot about plants and what they can handle and withstand. 
Um, she's also a garden writer. She's been published in Rocky Mountain Gardening, The Eagle Informer, and The Eagle Magazine. So thank you so much, Katie and Andrea. And thanks everybody so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.